Okay, I'll do another one. But I'm not going to do an intro for it. I don't know. Why don't you get me a game that I would enjoy playing? I don't know, like the AEW game? Fight Forever? Can you get Fight Forever? Either get Fight Forever or don't call me again. AEW, Fight Forever, developed by Ukes and published by THQ. Man, that sounds familiar. I think this is going to be amazing. This is going to be available on PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, PC, and Nintendo Switch. I'm excited about this. I've been excited about this, and I can't wait to tell you all about it. I've had a couple of weeks now with this game, and I've really explored it from top to bottom, and I want to cover as much of it as possible without this video being like, five hours long because I don't want to, you know, torture my editor too much. AEW Fight Forever is packed with game modes. We have one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, three-way matches, four-way matches, casino battle royales, exploding barbed wire death matches, ladder matches, mini games. There's a training mode. There's online. You can make custom wrestlers, custom teams. There's a career mode, Road to the Elite. There are challenges, both daily, weekly, normal challenges, and secret challenges. So there's a ton of stuff to do in this game, to unlock. There's daily content challenges to complete. Kind of keeps you coming back. So even though the main game modes are really enough for me, the fact that we have online play, that we have a career mode, that we have daily challenges, we have a shop to unlock things in where you can unlock costumes and additional wrestlers. Plus, they have downloadable content scheduled to bring even more content into the game. And they've even stated that unlike other wrestling games are out there where they sell you a new game every year, the plan is with this, instead of, instead of selling you a new game, they are going to update this game annually, probably with some kind of big kind of add-on downloadable content pack. Who knows? It might even end up being the same difference where they end up charging you full price for it. But I'm kind of hoping that it's reasonable. I like AEW. Look, this is just gonna, I'm just gonna lay the bias right out. That's why I figured, let me put out the AEW figures. Let me Go ahead and run the dynamite in the background. If you're looking for an unbiased review of this game, you're going to have to look somewhere else. I'm a huge AEW fan. And yes, I am an AEW fanboy. I am loyal to AEW. I've been watching every episode of Dynamite, Dark Elevation, Dark Rampage, the podcast, Hey EW, you name it. If it's AEW, I've watched it. Every pay-per-view, every behind-the-scenes feature, AEW All Access, everything. So I'm a huge AEW fanboy, but it does not mean that I will not have my complaints about this game. There's plenty of things that I could talk about where this game falls short. But just at the end of the day, if you are an AEW fan, you're going to pick this up. So really, it's more people who like, don't know what AEW is about at all is why I would want to get this out here and make this video. In fact, it's why I made a whole second channel just devoted basically to AEW wrestling because I believe that everyone should know about AEW wrestling because it is so much better than everything that's been going on in professional wrestling for about like the last 10 to 20 years. This really brought me back into wrestling and this game is bringing me back in to wrestling games. So let's check it out. AEW Fight Forever has a lot of the wrestlers that you would expect them to have if you're familiar with AEW wrestling. However, the roster might seem a little strange if you're not aware of the troubled developmental history that Fight Forever has had. It's been delayed, it's been pushed back, it had issues getting the rating cleared through the rating board, making sure it got a teen rating and not a mature rating, which would impact its sales. So, long story short, this game should have come out maybe a year ago, 
or two years ago. And the roster reflects that in some ways. And then you can see where they've tried to update it in some other ways. So some wrestlers are here, some are missing. Let's go over what's here and then let's talk about what's like not in the game. Let's talk about what is in the game and then we can talk a bit about what's not in the game. And what I really hope comes to the game through downloadable content or yearly expansions. All right, looking at the roster now, and I'm gonna try to be brief because it's big. We got Abaddon, I love Abaddon. I'm really happy to see that Ab Abaddon made the cut. She hasn't been around for some time, but I feel like one of these days they are gonna give Abaddon a proper push. And hey, you can do it in this game. Career mode with Abaddon, Abba yes. I don't know what that meant, that was silly. Okay, Adam Cole, baby. Of course we have Adam Cole in here. That would be really weird if he wasn't. We got Adam Page as well. It seems like a strange coincidence that they just started up AEW Collision and many of the wrestlers that would seem very odd to be in this game were just brought back to be out here in uh, weekly on Collision on Saturdays. So yeah, you got wrestlers on here like Andrade El Idolo, who we haven't seen in a long time but now is part of this game. Anna J. I think she's out with an injury, but she's she's been a mainstay of AEW television since 2019, so I'm really glad she's here. We got some special characters on the roster like Aubrey Edwards. And it would seem odd to have Aubrey Edwards wrestling, except they just had her wrestling on Collision. You see what I'm saying? Brian Cage is here. Man, I'm actually surprised that Brian Cage is here and not some other people, but I'm I think it's great to have him. Britt Baker, DMD, of course we're going to have Britt Baker. You wouldn't have an AEW game without Britt Baker. As a legendary unlock, we have Mr. Brody Lee. If you complete a certain part of the career mode, you are able to unlock Brody Lee. That is awesome. Brian Danielson. In fact, I think we have, well, we have most of the Blackpool Combat Club, and we even have Steven Regal, who is voiced in the game, but we don't have Wheeler Uter as far as I can tell, which is really weird to have like everybody except for Wheeler Uta. I don't know. I don't think we have Claudio either. A lot of the Ring of Honor guys are missing. Chris Jericho. Yeah, we all know Chris Jericho is going to be in here. What I'm actually surprised is that we don't have like six Chris Jerichos. We have Elite Champion Chris Jericho. I'm surprised we don't have the Wizard and we don't have the Ocho and... I don't know, pain maker. So we just have a one Chris Jericho. I mean, Chris Jericho should really be worried about that. Isn't Chris Jericho going to make sure we have a whole downloadable content just devoted to Chris Jericho? Christian Cage is here. I don't know why. Christian Cage barely wrestles. Chuck Taylor. CM Punk. Now there's one that got uh, shoehorned in really quick. I think there was a version of this game that existed without CM Punk, but yeah, as soon as he was signed, they fast-tracked him in here, and I'm pretty sure some of the reasons why they made his contract work out after all the drama that he's been through is to make sure that they could keep him in the game. He's going to be a major selling point. Speaking of strange additions, we got Cody Rhodes. Cody Rhodes is unlockable. It's amazing to see him in here. Theme song intact. Now he does have kind of his older 2019 ring gear. We don't have the updated ring gear that he was wearing towards the end. The stuff that he brought to the WWE. But hey, I think it's still an amazing accomplishment to actually have him in this game. Darby Allen. Dustin Rhodes. Eddie Kingston. Hikaru Shida. Now, the, the women's roster is still lacking. I mean, that is indicative of 2019 AEW, but still, I really want a down, some downloadable content to bring in our current champion, Tony Storm and Soraya. I mean, this is a huge omission is not to be representing the outcast, which is probably the most interesting thing going on in the women's league right now. I guess you can make them out of the creative wrestler mode, but more on that later. Jade Cargo, Jeff Hardy. You can get Matt Hardy too, actually. Two versions of Matt Hardy, but you got to pre-order the game to get him. He should be coming via downloadable content later on. 
John Silver, and we are missing a lot of the Dark Order. Um, I, I'm really surprised that we're missing Evil Uno. Maybe he's some kind of an unlock. Maybe you can unlock more of the Dark Order. I know Brody Lee was an, uh, an unlock. I've been trying to play this game as much as possible while I have it here before I reviewed it. But uh, as far as I know, we're really just looking at John Silver and Brody Lee when it comes to the Dark Order. And yeah, I'm really wondering where the rest of those guys are. Evil Uno and uh, Grayson and, and the rest of the Dark Order. Kind of odd. I know some of them have not been around very much. Some of them aren't signed anymore, but the Dark Order was such a big part of AEW. Just seems like that's a strange omission. John Moxley. Jungle Boy. And not only do we got Jungle Boy, but we have Tarzan Boy, the song. So we got the license rights. We're missing a lot of other um, licensed music. Like when it comes to John Moxley, we don't have Wild Thing in here, but we do have his old theme and I actually like his old theme better. So I like that. Kenny Omega. And here's another one that could use, we could use multiple Kenny Omegas. We have like 2019 Kenny Omega, but we're missing, you know, heel Kenny Omega and the return of Kenny Omega. We're actually missing wrestler looks in general. One of the most notable changes is Chris Statlander. We have the old alien look of Chris Statlander, but as you know, if you've been watching, she's come back. She's done a total overhaul. So it's really strange that even though she's moved on for the gimmick, the video game has not. We have Lance Archer. Okay. We also have Luchasaurus. Now here's another one that I'm talking about where we just had a major gimmick shift with Luchasaurus where he's like the dark Luchasaurus. And this would be like a recolor. You just have to recolor the mask black basically and tights black. I don't know why we didn't do that little bit. I, I guess it, I guess they were really trying to still get this thing out. You could tinker with it forever. I'm really hoping to see some additional wrestler gimmick updates come to the game very soon, especially for minor stuff like Luchasaurus where it seems like a, a, a palette swap would make the game so much more current than it is. Malachi Black, and man, what an omission here where we just get Malachi Black and we don't get the rest of House of Black. In fact, we don't even get the trio's belts. And right now the House of Black is holding the trio's belts. So, wow, major omission there. But maybe that's like a whole downloadable content onto itself to give us trio's matches like official, like the House of Black rules. They have the House Rules match, which has like a whole special look to it. It seems like that would be really good downloadable content. I didn't see that on the list of downloadable contents. What I saw is FTR is coming, Danhausen and Hook are coming, but I didn't see anything about the House of Black. We have Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, of course. They have their old looks here, but they're one of the few wrestlers that actually you can unlock their new updated looks. So I guess it helps be in the EVPs. Miro is here and Miro is back on TV. So very timely there. We have MJF, no devil mask. Nyla Rose is here. Orange Cassidy, Pac. Now, it's kind of weird to see Pac because Pac has not been around in some time, but a huge part of AEW in 2019. So definitely really happy to see Pac here and hoping we'll see him again real soon on TV and on pay-per-views. We got the Lucha Bros, Penta and Ray, Powerhouse Hobbs, Ricky Starks, Rio, Ruby Soho, no green hair, Sammy Guevara, Scorpio Sky. Now I hear he's back as well, so that's fantastic. Sting! It's Sting! Tay Mello! Gonna be really weird to see her wrestle. <laughs> it's old face Tay Mello too. I don't even think the crowd hates her yet. Thunder Rosa. Reflected as the champion in the game. It really dates it. Really tells you what time that this game should have came out. Is that they still have Thunder Rosa as champion. Trent Beretta with hair. Man, that's a weird one. That That's a real weird one that they didn't update Trent uh, with his new look now. He hasn't had hair in a year or two. 
So that's a that's a weird one to see. Also with hair, Wardlow. Wardlow did cut his hair. Well, no, I'm sorry. His hair was cut by Samoa Joe. And it looks like Samoa Joe was cut from the game as well. And then finally, at least the roster that I have unlocked so far, and I'm not sure how many more wrestlers are going to be added to this. We got Yuka Sakazaki, who we don't see much at all, but I'm happy to see it. We need more female wrestlers in this game that downloadable content cannot come soon enough. So now I mentioned some of the wrestlers that we're missing, but it's not just wrestlers that we're missing, it's game modes, it's match types. We're missing cage matches, we're missing blood and guts, we're missing stadium stampede, anarchy in the arena, dog collar matches, just to name a few. I mean, I'm sure there's other matches that I'm leaving out, but these are some of the most notable omissions, and I'm really hoping to see that come in over time. What we have is very good, but yeah, these things that are missing, I'm going to want to recreate those AEW moments at some time, and I'm, I'm hoping that it comes later on. Now, I do have a video over on my main channel. Um, just search for Mr. Hartgrave on YouTube. It'll come up, or maybe they'll even be so kind as to link it down below. And you can get my first impressions on this game where I played some one-on-one -on -one matches and just kind of experienced the game. And you know what? Just the one-on-one -on -one matches, just going and doing the daily missions was enough for me. Being a huge AEW fan, that's really all I need to be able to do is to go in there, recreate my favorite moments, have my favorite wrestlers fight each other, do the matches that I remember, do the matches that I've always wanted to see. That's really good for me. But this game has so much more to offer. Outside of the standard solo player experience, what I liked most was calling up one of my friends, having them come over, and we loaded up some of the player versus player matches. In particular, the exploding barbed wire death match. Now, if you're familiar with AW history, you know that the exploding barbed wire death match didn't quite go as planned. <laughs> And I can tell you right from the start, this was one of the most fun things I've done with this game is being able to sit right next to someone. Now you can play this local co-op with up to four players as long as you got the controllers and the system to do it. And that's gonna be where this game really shines. I mean, I had a lot of fun just playing it on my own, playing it against the computer, but the computer AI, it's only so good, it's, it's not that great. When you're really playing against another player and you're sitting next to him and you're trash talking, and I'm sure it's gonna be okay doing this online as well. I mean, nobody can get their friends to come over anymore. I know I got a problem. I mean, I got a creepy house. I can't get anybody to come over here. But if you can get your friends in a room and play this game like you used to back when, you know, back in the day, Back when you got the Nintendo 64, they had the four controller ports on the front and everything was made for four players and life was good, then you're gonna have a great time with AEW Fight Forever. And if you're playing the Exploding Barbed Wire Deathmatch, the ring properly explodes. That's right, when the timer ticks down to zero, the ring will explode the way it should have back in Revolution, I think 20, 20, 2019 was that? I think it was before 2020. It was in the before times. Yeah. Back in 2019, Kenny Omega and John Moxley had this great exploding death match fight. The, the people forget the match was extremely good up until the botched ending where the fireworks just didn't explode properly. But here we're redeemed and the ring properly explodes. <laughs> So not only do we have exploding barbed wire death matches, but we also have a ladder match. And I played that with my friend as well. And that was also phenomenal. The, the controls really hold up very, from what I remember, these games used to be a lot jankier than this game. So people have been criticizing AEW Fight Forever and saying, oh, it looks so stiff compared to these other wrestling games that we're familiar with. And I'm not gonna name them. I'm not gonna do them the dignity of giving them a name. Tell you, I, I don't know. People talk about wrestling tribalism. I'm hardcore into the AEW tribe. I just, I gotta say it once again, heavily biased. I'm sorry, deal with it. But from what I remember of these games from my youth, the controls were much more janky than these are here. Here, 
setting up ladders was done efficiently and easily. Maybe a little tricky here and there, but I don't know. The controls just seem to work so much better. There's a refinement here. You would be mistaken if you look at this as the first game in a series. It's not really. It's like the ninth or 10th or 12th game that Ux has made. So there's a lot of refinement to the simple arcade style wrestling that's presented here that you wouldn't get if this was the company's first time out. Like, yes, it's the first AW video game, but it's not the first time Ux has made a video game. And it shows. Using weapons, setting up tables, wrestlers bleeding all over the fucking ring. It's goddamn incredible. Give me this fast arcade style wrestling with blood and guts and wrestling mayhem over any other style of wrestling game any day. This is what I want in a wrestling game. So me and my friend were doing a little what if. We put together a little two versus two where we picked two underdogs against two champions. We went up against Jade Cargill and Britt Baker and we picked Yuka Sakazaki and Shida. My, my, my buddy's a big Shida fan. Uh, you know what? Everybody's got like somebody. <laughs> no, that was me. <laughs> Shida's great. I like Shida. Holy Shida. Sheeta was actually a champion as well. To be fair, she did hold the belt for a, a, a good long time. She was the last one who hold, held the old belt. Before the update and the look. I don't know if that's true. I thought Britt Baker held it for a minute. Maybe, maybe she won the old belt and then they gave her the new belt. I don't know, man. AEW Trivia. Me and my buddy played the AEW Trivia mini game as well. That's going to be on a video on my second channel. Just go look at all my channels. Put all my links down below. We also had a blast playing AEW Trivia. The mini games in this are actually quite good. Um, in particular, we really enjoyed AEW Trivia. And there's a lot of extra mini games too. So it only shows three mini games, but there's actually a lot more mini games that are unlockable. What I assume you have to do is win them. I happen to suck at the mini games, so I have not unlocked any except for the three that are unlocked when you load up the game. But if you know another AEW nerd, I highly recommend that you check out the AEW trivia. Play that with them, or at least go to my second channel and watch that video because we had a blast with that. Before I talk about career mode, I do want to mention one game mode that I was not happy with, and that was the Casino Battle Royale. So we loaded this up, and I don't know, like I said, this is this is early, an early review of this game. Maybe they can fix this. There were only four wrestlers in that ring, and as soon as a fifth wrestler would come down to the ring, this is a Battle Royale style. So you got four wrestlers in the ring and then every few minutes, another wrestler comes down to the ring. Whenever that would happen, one of the wrestlers would just jump over the top. And so we could only have four wrestlers in the ring at a time. Now, as far as I understand, that should not be a technological limitation of any of these consoles. So I don't know why that's the case. It totally kills that game mode makes me wonder why it's even in the game. I was extremely disappointed with that. Extremely disappointed to see only four wrestlers being allowed in the ring at a time. And then the extra jank of when the fifth wrestler comes in, just arbitrarily one of the wrestlers gets eliminated. I understand you wanted to include the Casino Royale match, but if you can't do it right, man, we had so many other great match types. I'd rather see like a well-executed dog collar match than have a janky casino, broken Casino Royale match. But really, there's so much good here. I don't want to focus on the bad. Let's talk about the career mode. So I loaded up career mode 
and I wasn't sure where to go with this. I wasn't quite ready to create my own character yet. I'm not sure if I'm going to create my own character in this game. I love AEW so much, I just want to play with the roster. And I was thinking about, well, what's going to be the point of career mode? Is it going to be... Is it going to be to become the world champion? Well, if the goal is to become the world champion, then there's only one choice. It's got to be MJF. So I picked MJF and I started going through the career mode with him. The career mode starts. Tony Khan calls you on the phone and invites you to wrestle for him as part of AEW. And we start to tell the story of AEW wrestling. Now, this is really what I like most. I've said that so many times. I like everything about this fucking game. Is there anything I don't like about the fucking game? No, I like the whole fucking game. I even like the janky fucking Casino Royale match. I was lying. <laughs> so one of the things I like the most about AEW Fight Forever is the way it tells the story of AEW, which I've tried to tell many times in videos and have always fallen on my fucking face. So I'm so glad that there's now a video game out there that clearly shows the history of AEW in, in a nutshell. You know, you don't have to know every single fucking thing that happened with the creation of AEW wrestling. But it's very cool to get this like Cliff Notes version because I know there's so many people out there that have no idea what the fuck AEW is and you hear some lunatic like me in a suit ranting and raving about it when you're trying to watch videos about like some kind of predatory mobile game or Amanda the Adventure or whatever fucking shit I'm talking about and I shoehorn AEW into it because I'm such a goddamn fanboy. At least now I can say if you want to understand AEW, Go pick up AEW Fight Forever, play it for a couple of hours, and you are going to know so much more about AEW Wrestling. And I think that is what this game is going to do best, is it's going to get people to want to know more, to want to watch the show, to want to learn about these amazing personalities that are in this game. And I am so happy that this exists because it's such an easy thing to be able to tell someone to do. Not only can you play an enjoyable wrestling game that is incredibly fun, like the wrestling games that we used to play back 10 years ago, 20 years ago, when we're playing on the Nintendo 64, when you're playing on the PlayStation, and they got all these great WCW and WWF games. And now we have this new game that continues on the lineage, developed by an, a, an amazing developer like Ukes, but will introduce you to this whole new world of AEW wrestling that either if you're a fan, you're going to enjoy this no matter what. But if you don't know about AEW, then you're going to learn about it and it's going to be an, a, an amazingly good time. I was playing the career mode as MJF and it felt really weird. So yeah, it just didn't feel right at all. I had MJF doing all kinds of out of character shit. He was taking selfies with motherfuckers. He was like starting up some kind of rivalry with Eddie Kingston and they became friends. Now, sometimes it did line up and when it lined up, it was really cool. When it really felt, and I don't know if this was by accident or by design, but sometimes it felt like the story was being made for MJF. Like MJF had like this friendship with Cody Rhodes, which he did. And then like Cody Rhodes actually turned on MJF, which was not what happened in the history, but you know, MJF turned on Cody Rhodes. So it was interesting seeing the other side of that, this alternate history of AEW that was playing out where Cody betrayed MJF, but then MJF went on like a vengeance streak and started taking out the other EVPs. And it all culminated in a wrestling match against the Young Bucks, where I got my ass handed to me because this game is actually kind of fucking hard. <laughs> Did I say the AI sucks? The AI sucks until they start double teaming you. Then the AI is quite annoying. So yeah, if you want to go through the career mode with one of the pre-made wrestlers, there is some opportunity to have some fun there, but I really think you're going to get the most out of that if you create your own wrestler. In fact, you know what? Fuck what I said about not making my own wrestler. I need to get into this game. I need, we need a Mr. Hargrave. It's time for Mr. Hargrave to become all elite. Let's level the fuck up.
now that Mr. Hargrave is all elite, I think it's time to give this Road to the Elite mode another shot, this time using a created character because, yeah, I just wasn't feeling it using MJF, using one of the, you know, known AEW wrestlers, one of the roster wrestlers. I just, a lot of the functionality didn't make sense. A lot of the... A lot of the things about the mode weren't clicking. Like, you can't increase the stats. So if you use any of the characters that are in the game, you can't you can't make them any better. They just are the way they are. So the mode kind of feels pointless. But if you're using a created character, then you are going to be able to raise your stats as you play and learn new moves and abilities. And it's going to be a much more deep role playing experience. And I think this is what the game is. This is what this game mode was based around is using your created character on it. Yes, you can use one of the other characters, but it's just not going to be the same experience. I like how you can be vegetarian or non-vegetarian. It's strictly an aesthetic thing, but as you go through, you're going to be able to eat at restaurants and you're going to be able to, um, they're actually real places in the different cities where they seem to have some kind of sponsorship tie in So that that's kind of fun. And then you can get vegetarian or non-vegetarian dishes. I mean, you can pick your personality, whether you're a hero, a monster, confident, jerk, quiet, enigma. I think I'm going to be an enigma. I didn't get to do this with MJF. MJF already is set as probably mega heel. So, all right, let's go ahead and start the road to elite this time using my created wrestler, and we're gonna check this out. Mr. Hartgrave looks good in his suit. God damn, look at that boy. I'm happy with what I was able to create here using the create a wrestler mode. And yeah, now the story makes a little more sense too, because you're not gonna, if, if you know AEW, then you're not gonna, wind up in this cognitive dissonant kind of thing where it's like, well, that's not the way that happened. Why is he doing that? Why is he making friends with him? Well, it can be, it can be your wrestler now. You could make, you could recreate Joey Janela and have him be the dominant champion you always thought he should be. Oh, good. Here's that fucking glitched out casino battle royale I was talking about. Yay. <laughs> Why the fuck am I playing the game mode that I already badmouthed in this review as a way to showcase how much I enjoy the game? I don't fucking know. There's Mr. Hartgrave. He's a fucking zero. Zero wins, zero losses. Uh, entrances are truncated. You don't get the full entrance here. Um, so some people might be kind of annoyed by that, but this game really focuses on arcade action and not so much recreation of you know the aw experience all right so here we are last time i played this i was mjf and i just lost like right away here's some punching i i know i'm punching these are things i could do i could punch sammy Guevara in the face man i would get my ass kicked in this ring what the fuck am i doing i'm being rather bold there are multiple paths to go down when you're playing career mode. So depending on how you do in the matches, whether you win, whether you lose, who defeats you, who you beat, you're going to go down different paths. Now, it doesn't have a whole lot of different paths, but I think there's enough here that you're going to get a ton of replay value out of this game. I'm going to try to do a finisher. I don't know if I can. Oh, DDT. You got fucked up. Mr. Hartgrave's got DDTs and a double fist to the nuts and a double fist to the nuts. <laughs> a double double fist to the nuts. Two nut shots. Sammy's out. Fuck you, Sammy. Dude, I would never punch Powerhouse Hobbs in my fucking wildest dreams. I would never fucking punch a Powerhouse Hobbs. What the fuck would have to be wrong with you to punch a Powerhouse Hobbs? I mean, you give an AEW fanboy, Mark ass fanboy like myself, this game, and and what are you gonna get, man? What what kind of review am I actually gonna get? I think I just throw him out with the. Here 
We're going to do a DDT on Powerhouse Hobbs, man. That is something you're never going to see in your entire life. Mr. Hargrave doing DDTs on Powerhouse Hobbs. Oh, no. He's throwing me out. I'm getting thrown the fuck out. Oh. I got eliminated. <laughs> All right. Let me show you that screen now. I did well, though. I eliminated eight people. I went on to be very dominant in that Casino Royale match, but I, I got my ass handed to me. I think if you win the first match, you're going to do different stuff. But I, I believe the same thing. I mean, I got kicked out of the ring instantly when I was playing as MJF. And so, yeah, the, what happens in the matches determines which parts of the story you get to go towards. And here's that here. Are the, uh, that that's shown in the snapshot album. So, yeah, you can see the path that I went on before I went to unlikely partnership and then I went to join the dark order and then I had relationship problems and then I went to the founders fall. So I think if you win the initial match or I, I don't know what, there's two other ways to go on, on the road to all out, depending on what happens to you during that casino Royale match. As far as I can tell, I don't know. It doesn't tell you how to unlock all these. So that's a lot of the replayability is going through here and figuring out all these different paths. If you enjoy watching people play video games, then I would encourage you to check out my second wrestling channel. Links are down below or also right here. Go to Twitch uh, TV forward slash Mr. Hargrave. I'm going to be streaming this game all today. If you're watching this the day it comes out or probably any day because I love this stupid game. And then, yes, here's what I wanted to show you. When, you, when you're playing as known wrestler, you're not going to be able to go in here and improve your stats with the currency that you earn. You're going to have like all of this is going to be all decked out where you have all of these powerful stats if you're playing as one of the created characters, but if you're or if you're playing as one of the known characters, if you're playing as a created character, then you get to grow your character as you go. So the better you do, the stronger your character can get. I believe you can play through this multiple times and keep making them stronger and stronger and doing better and better. You can unlock as many skills as you want. If you're playing as one of the known wrestlers, then you're locked down to the skills that you have and you can't improve them. So it takes a lot of the fun away from this game mode. So I would suggest if you're going to play this game mode, really take the time, make a, make a character yourself, and then you're going to have more fun with it. Because every turn you get to increase your skills, become a better wrestler by either uh, you can go out to eat to increase your stamina, you can do sightseeing to increase your mood, meet and greets, to increase your energy and and your mood and then you can play mini games and this is where you get all the extra currency to improve your character you play mini games with the young bucks and that's where you can unlock all the other mini games in the game as well i'm not actually going to spend a lot of time in this review here on aggro gamer doing this but i did want to show you how much more interesting it is because if you just lo loaded up this career mode using one of the created one of the normal wrestlers on the roster one of the known wrestlers then you wouldn't see all this extra cool stuff that you get to do when you play as a created wrestler so take the time do that or don't but you know i told you so and if you want to see me play through this definitely check out my other channels or come visit me on twitch so that's aew fight forever it is a phenomenal wrestling game the only re I've been waiting for another one of these games to come out for years. Like I said, I was easy to win over, but if you're not an AEW fan and if you've never played a wrestling game like this, I think this is a great place to start on both fronts. Did I say everything I needed to say? Thank you to Agro Gamer for putting this game in front of me. Thank you to Ray for editing this up. It's getting very late here. We're approaching 1 a.m. I probably should wrap this up. I don't think I'm going to cramp. I don't think I'm going to say any more creative things in this review than I've already said. Stay angry, motherfuckers. Is that really the tagline?
playing this with AEW with <laughs> I'm just fucking off now. Put an edit in there. I had a great run. I'm doing good. That felt like the summary at the end. Maybe that's the summary at the end. And maybe this is the end of the video. Fuck off. Like and subscribe. Watch the other videos on the channel or don't. You barely watch this fucking video. Go watch the goddamn Mario trailer another hundred fucking times. I don't know what you people are doing on this channel. Go check out my links. The links are down below. Aggro gamer, stay angry, motherfuckers. I don't know. That's an ending, I guess.